Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Our first reading today is on page 731 in your Pew Bibles, Daniel 12, 1 through 3. At that time, Michael, the great prince who protects your people, will arise. There will be a time of distress, such as not happened from the beginning of nations until then. But at that time, your people, everyone whose name is found written in the book, will be delivered. Multitudes who sleep in the dust of the earth will awake, some to everlasting life, others to shame and everlasting contempt. Those who are wise will shine like the brightness of the heavens, and those who lead many to righteousness like the stars forever and ever. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our psalm today is Psalm 16, found on page 437 of your Bible. I will read the odd verses if you will respond with the even. Keep me safe, my God, for in you I take refuge. I say to the Lord, you are my Lord. Apart from you, I have no other thing. I say of the holy people who are in the land, they are the noble ones, in whom is all my delight. Approaching. 
Our gospel this morning comes to us from Mark in the 13th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. I'll be reading Mark 13, 1 through 13, on page 825 of your pew Bible. Signs of the end of the age. As he was leaving the temple, one of his disciples said to him, Look, teacher, what massive stones, what magnificent buildings. Do you see all these great buildings, replied Jesus? Not one stone here will be left on another. Everyone will be thrown down. As Jesus was sitting on the Mount of Olives opposite the temple, Peter, James, and John, and Andrew asked him privately, Tell us when these things will happen. And what will be the sign that they are about to be fulfilled? Jesus said to him, Watch out that no one deceives you. Many will come in my name claiming I am he, and will deceive many. When you hear of wars and rumors of wars, do not be alarmed. Such things must happen, but the end is still to come. Nation will rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. And there will be earthquakes in various places, and famines. These are the beginnings of birth pains. You must be on your guard. You will be handed over to the local councils and flogged in the synagogues. On account of me, you will stand before governors and kings as witnesses to them. And the gospel must first be preached to all nations. Whenever you are arrested and brought to trial, do not worry beforehand about what to say. Just say whatever is given you at the time. For it is not you speaking, but the Holy Spirit. Brother will betray brother to death, and father his child. Children rebel against their parents and have them put to death. All men will hate you because of me. But he who stands firm to the end will be saved. This is the gospel of our Lord. Ah, again, grace and peace from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. That's his major message, grace and peace, no matter what happens. So, questions for any rumors. What are they? Well, the definition of a rumor is actually a currently circulating story or report of an uncertain or doubtful truth. Okay? Rumors, we've heard them all. But we know right off, the, right off the bat that the Bible is not real, is it? For none of its facts or predictions have ever been proven wrong. So we know that the Bible is truth. But the rumors and predictions of, of man, they've went on for centuries, haven't they? And they've all fallen by the wayside. As I was looking at this end of times, end of times uh, gospel, and this what it all meant. Just before I look back, a few of the end of times predictions. And this started in 2012, the Maya apocalypse. And I almost can't remember this one. December 21st, remember that, 2012, the, apocalypse, the Mayan calendar came to an end, their, their worldly calendar. And unbelievably, it was a calendar that was correct for 5,125 years. I mean, that's a lot of time. But the calendar ended there. So people decided that, oh, that must be the end of time. And people went went into convulsions about it. I mean, people came up with reasons why it was going to happen, we were going to be collided with a meteor, you name it. It says in the, in the article I read that preparations for the end of the world as we know it include a modern day Noah's Ark built by a man in China. And extensive sales and survival kits. People believe the rumor. Going back, Harold Camping, he publicly announced that through his numerology interpretation of the Bible, 19, in 1992 he published a book honestly titled 1994, which predicted the end of time. 
Well, it's one of the most high profile predictions. May 21st, 2011, a date that was calculated to be exactly 7,000 years after the political flood. But will that date pass also? Well, it changed to October 21st, 2011. But, oops, three strikes, you're out, buddy. It didn't happen. Well, back in 1843, Millerism, 100,000 followers believed that they would be carried off to heaven when the date arrived. When the 1843 prediction failed to materialize, Miller recalculated and determined that the world would actually end in 1844. Again, it didn't happen. But 100,000 people followed him. Think of that. And this is what I love. Back in 1806, a domesticated hen in Leeds, England, appeared to be laying eggs inscribed with the message, Christ is coming. Great numbers of people reportedly visited the head and began to despair of the coming of the Judgment Day. It was soon discovered, however, the eggs were not in fact prophetic messages, but the work of their owner, who had been writing on the eggs in corrosive ink and reinserting them in the poor hen's bottom. <laughs> How far do we want to go for this stuff? I mean, to say that we know the end. But people went and looked at this hand. It's, it's like, excuse me, excuse me, excuse me. And the last one I love was back in 1524. I mean, we're talking a long time ago. Johannes Stoffler, a respected German mathematician and astrologer, predicted that a great flood would cover the world on February 25th, 1524. Because the known planets would be in alignment under Pisces. A water sign. Okay. Though there was light rain on the day, the predicted flood, there was no actual flooding materialized. Now, did you catch the biggest farce in that one? All the known planets would be in alignment under Pisces, a water sign. So let's mix astrology with Christianity, and then we definitely got it figured out, right? Those were rumors over a 500 year period. And you look at how people followed it, how persuasive the people that, that came up with them were. But they were all just rumors, weren't they? They were all proven wrong. You know why? Because the men talking had no authority. They had no authority to say, this is the end of time. Jesus Christ, our Lord, who does have authority, he said the end will happen. He said there will be signs. But the thing is, how do we decipher those end of time words? How do we decipher what he meant by this is going to happen and that's going to happen? You know what the key point is? To stop it! we got to quit trying to figure out the exact time and just believe the word is true. Jesus tells us in Matthew 24, verse 36, about the day or hour, no one knows. Not even the angels in heaven or the Son, but only the Father. We're not supposed to worry about the exact day. Because we're not supposed to wait till the last day to become Christians, are we? We're not supposed to wait till the last day to find faith. It made me think of people that, that run out of gas in their cars, right? We have a gas gauge. And most cars have a little light, maybe even a beeper, that tells you you are getting close to the end. But people still run out of gas. All the warning signs in the world don't get them on the wall, do it? I mean, why do they wait till it's too late? You can ask my wife. I say this quite often. The cost to fill the top half is the same as the bottom half. Why do we have to use it all up before we 
say, oh my gosh, I gotta go to the gas station. Since we're doing our faith lives, we think we can go a little farther before I can worry. I'll go to church next week. Yeah, I got time. The gate says we're pretty good yet. <laughs> we try to use up every bit of God's providence and God's faith in us. We try to use every little bit of it before we come back and say, Lord, I need to be filled. No, the words in our Bible are our guide to life. Jesus is very clear there will be an end of time. We will see an end of life as we know it now. But the point is, sin will be stopped. It's not that it's going to be a, a time to destroy us. It's a time where he will stop sin. He will draw the line and say, that's it. Now, as we say in our Lord's Prayer, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Woohoo! Right, Haley? Woohoo! <laughs> you tell them the Lord's Prayer is the most coolest thing in the world. We should be cheering all the way through it. Because, wow, every part of it is for us to be happy. You know, in our reading this morning, Martin and Mark, The disciples go to Jesus. Tell us when these things will happen. You know, so said in private. You know, Jesus, you'll, you, you'll tell us. You know, don't worry about the other guys. Tell us. And what will be the sign that they're all about to be filled? Well, God, for our heart, we want to we want to figure out when this is going to happen. Let's make a tally of what Jesus. Told us just this morning. Jesus said to them, Watch out, and no one deceives you. Many will come in my name, claiming I am He, and will deceive many. When you hear of wars and rumors of wars, do not be alarmed. Such things must happen, and the end is still to come. The nation will rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. There will be earthquakes in various places and famines. These are the beginnings of the birth birthdays. Now, some will say we've seen this already, right? Yeah, these are pretty common affairs. So, we'll call that happen. You must be on your guard. You'll be handed over to the local councils and flogged in the synagogues. On account of me, you will stand before governors and kings as witnesses. Now, you look at how most of the disciples died. This, this has happened too, right? They were flogged, they were tortured, they were they did have terrible things done to them for preaching God. In China, I don't know if you realize, but China currently right now is the biggest eradication of Christianity known in the last hundred years. They're going to get Christianity out of their country. People are being put in prison and flogged. Okay? Happened. Number two. So, the next verse, the tone changes a little bit. And the gospel wants you to preach to all nations. So, what are all nations? According to BibleWord.com, the answer depends on how you define the word nations. The word nation, as found in Matthew 24, 14, is the Greek word ethnos, ethnos, the meaning of the word ethnos, I'm sorry, may be best defined as a multitude of individuals of the same nature, genus, or simply put as a, a people group. If we think of the word nation simply as a geographical boundary, geography, you got it, you know, geography. <laughs> then certainly the gospel has been preached to every nation. The gospel's been on every continent in the world. However, the biblical understanding is a people group. With this definition, the task is far from over. Okay. Many people don't know the true gospel, do they? Right here in the United States of America, there's many, many people that don't know the true gospel. So let's go on the other side not that. All right, it's for two to one. So, come back here. 
Verse 11, whenever you are arrested and brought to trial, do not worry beforehand about what to say. Just so it say what is, ever, what is given to time. For it is not you speaking, but the Holy Spirit. Now, I'm putting that on the not happen side. Because we don't go to court without a lawyer, do we? We never go to court without somebody to speak for us. We never speak for ourselves in any place. We don't go for a judge before court and speak for ourselves without a lawyer present. So that's truly not happened yet. Verse 12. Brother will betray brother to death and a father his child. Children rebel against their parents and have them put to death. I don't have to go very far on that one, do I? The word family has lost its meaning in too many places. We're going to put that one on the happen side. We've all seen it. And the last one he gives us, everyone will hate you because of me. But the one who stands firm to the end will be saved. True Christians have been considered prejudiced, big or homophobes, hypocrites, you name it. We've been hated by the world, haven't we? Stiff necked, you name it, we've been hated by the world. When a person says they will follow Christ and only his way, they're not following the world. You're hated, aren't you? That's why we're trying to kick it out of the, the court or out of the government, every place else, because we don't want God in the middle of it. So I'm calling that what happened. Okay. We're four or two. That's good news. So Jesus, in that little set of verses, says this will happen. We still got two left. We're not there yet. We still have hope. But we look at the two that aren't dead yet. That's the trick here. It ain't a trick, it's the truth. What am I saying? Preaching the word to all people and trusting the Spirit. Whoa. Well, you look at it, it makes sense, doesn't it? Because we can't do this on our own. We will never get the word preached to everybody in this world without the Spirit in us, without the power of Christ. Remember last week? Our, our guy, Martin Luther? I believe that I cannot by my own reason or strength believe in Jesus Christ my Lord or come to him. But the Holy Spirit has called me by the gospel, enlightened me with his gifts, sanctified and kept me in the one true faith. Until we get that part in our life, we can't preach the word to all the people in the world because we don't have the power. I mean, until we start listening to the Holy Spirit and understanding and trusting His guidance. So God is saying, hey, you're missing a major point of this all, and I want you to get it before I before it ends. You need to humble your hearts. I'm going to show you some ugly, nasty things to get you to start thinking about this. But you got to do it. Because, you know, our reading in Daniel doesn't look good for those who want this. Faith is hard. It's just humbling our hearts and, and, and letting it happen. Hebrews 10, 23 and 23, 25. Let us hold unswervingly to the hope we profess for he who promised is faithful. And let us consider how we may spur one another on toward love and good deeds. Not giving up meeting together as some in are in the habit of doing, but encouraging one another. And all the more as you see the day approaching. 
God says, I'm going to give you every chance. I'm going to give you every sign. I'm going to say, hey, the gas gauge light is beeping. It's time to pull in and let me fill you up. But will we do it? Well, unfortunately, we don't know. As I said, the end times could be pretty sparse if we just all take up. I don't think God's going to be too, too disappointed. So that on that last day that he doesn't have too many to worry about on the wrong side. But when we jump ahead and mark a little farther, Jesus' words again. Verse 24, but in those days following that distress, the sun will be darkened and the moon will not give its light. The stars will fall from the sky and the heavenly bodies will be shaken. At that time, people will see the Son of Man coming in the clouds with great power and glory. And he will send his angels and gather his elect from the four winds, from the ends of the earth to the ends of the heaven. He will gather his elect. Those that choose to believe. He will gather his elect. It's not about who he is going to pick from who they are. He's going to pick about who we are to him. See, none of this is in until we say to him. No, God's going to come and say, yes. You believed me. You humbled your heart. You were ready. For those who won't let their heart of stone become a heart of flesh, I don't want to see the end. But again, don't worry. Because God is telling us, I'm going to give you every chance, every second, everything you can think of to be with me. And I love you that much. That's love. That's the love of our God. That's his grace, that's his plan, that's his power. And all we gotta do is say yes. Oh, let us pray. Oh dear Heavenly Father, when we talk about the end times, many get worried or afraid. But those are the ones that are are not giving themselves to you. You tell us that you will come and gather your elect. You will gather your people that believe in you, that trust in you before anything happens. We will not see the destruction because we'll be with you. And the fact that you drew the line and you're going to shut sin off is good for us. It's not a bad thing, but our sinful natures keep telling us, oh, 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 we don't want to change. God, we got to quit looking at the Bible as a, as a masterpiece of doom and start looking at it as an absolute masterpiece of joy and, and eternity and your grace. You show us what will happen, but you show us also what we are expected to do. God, this Fill our hearts with your spirit to help us put down our shields and just come to you. So that we don't worry about that last day, but look forward to it. Because then everything will be perfect. As I say, your will will be done. Woohoo! God, you you smile when we know that, and you smile when we're happy. Help us to be happy to. We just pray this in your holy name. Amen. Amen. Now let us share some prayers for our people and our, our world. My dear Heavenly Father, this is your world. This is your creation. You are God. You are 
You are our, our maker. Your creation, for some reason, decided that it was more important than you, our creator. We went our own way. We went into a sinful way. But God, instead of taking your creation and destroying it completely, you gave us chance over chance to find you. You've never given up your gracious love toward your creation. You've destroyed the evil that has tried to overcome the good many times. But for some reason, we continue to let the evil overshadow us. Dear Heavenly Father, continue to be with us. Continue to show us your grace. Continue to show us your hope that we will be with you as long as we stay strong and follow your, your plan. Dear Heavenly Father, you sent your Son the ultimate show of your grace and your love to give us one last chance. Help us to open our hearts and, and look to Jesus and just ask him for forgiveness and guidance. Honor your Heavenly Father in your mercy. Oh, Lord Jesus, I just love your words. You come, you, you told your disciples things in such simple ways. And you never quit saying that it's your Father in Heaven's plan. You never took, you never took his authority, you never took his, his plan into your hands and said, I'm changing it. And you tell us over and over, don't try to do it on your own. Follow me and I'll show you the Father and we can get you to the end. Oh dear Jesus, you went to the cross to show us how important that was. Dear Jesus, continue to be our Lord and Savior. Because this is your Father sent you, you sent us the Spirit. Another chance to understand who you are. And not have to worry about the end of times. Oh Lord Jesus, thank you for being our, our shepherd. Oh, Lord Jesus, in your mercy. Sure. And finally, Holy Spirit, you are the one that's in our hearts. You are the battle, the, the warrior. You are the one that continues to try to, to get our attention. Oh, Holy Spirit, stand up in your power and be strong and show us how to be strong to help you. Holy Spirit, you're the one we pray to take our prayers to our Father in Heaven. This morning we want to pray for, for Jody and John. Give her, give her strength, give her healing. Give John peace that, that you know he's mourning and he's in, he's in pain. But Lord, let us always go back to you for your plan. Lord, we just want to be with all those people in our world that are struggling with this COVID. Those that are, are fighting the, the answers to stay with their own answers. Those that are saying, oh no, the gas stage isn't empty yet. I don't have to try. Give them your spirit and your will to say, no, I want to be ahead of this, not behind. I don't need to run out of gas and end up on a ventilator before I will stand and take what you've given me. Lord, you've taught us over the last year that we can't do this alone. That we need each other. That we need to trust and follow you. Out your Holy Spirit. Just take our prayers of need and our prayers of love and our prayers of praise to our Father in heaven. Give him our Give him our love and our, 
our joy. We just pray all this knowing that in your plan, in your way, we will never see the doom and the destruction as you clean your earth the last time. Oh, Lord, give us joy. We just pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.